Hello. Welcome back. It's good to see you again. Okay, so today is your 50 therapy session. And in today's session, we're going to be looking at possibly the most common thinking pattern that causes distress. I'm just going to move this plant a little bit. Don't want to start a fire. <laughs> now, if you would like reminder of our previous session I've made a recording and you can watch it here it should pop up on the screen okay now before we look at that very common thinking pattern let's just review how your week has been now I ask you to keep a diary every day where you record your feelings and also the thoughts that go along with these feelings. Is that it there? Can I take a look? Okay. Well, you've kept it very nicely. I can see you've kept it every single day. And I can see that when your emotions rise above about a five or a six, you are identifying the thoughts that trigger those emotions. I think this is a really useful routine to get into to particularly when we are struggling to pause and step back a little bit from how we're feeling how we're thinking and to consider that it allows us some distance in that distance, other options, other ways of thinking about things have the opportunity to present themselves. So, even if you never do anything else, even if you never use any of the other strategies that we discuss, just this one, just this recording strategy, it will help you to move away a little bit from the thoughts and the feelings that are causing you discomfort or distress. But we can do more. We can do more than just record. For example, we can think about this thinking pattern that I mentioned. Very, very common thinking pattern. It is often referred to as black and white thinking. You may have heard of it. Or all or nothing thinking. And it's a tendency that we all have to categorise things in a very dichotomous way. So things are either one way or the polar opposite of that way. So it's as if we filter out everything in between 
those two categories, nothing exists in between them. So, examples of this are good and bad, right or wrong, success or failure. What else have I got here? Fat or thin, love or hate, and of course, black, white, or, or nothing. Now, as I said, we're all prone to do this. Nature seems to have programmed us to think in this way and this is probably because we have so much information to process. Being prone to categorise in a dichotomous way makes us more efficient information processing machines. <laughs> now, when we're in a good place, this works for us. We have a tendency to filter out all the bad and end up categorising in a good way, in a white way, in an all way. But when we're feeling not so good, maybe stressed or anxious or a little depressed, we're prone to filtering out all the good stuff that has the potential to make us feel better and we end up in the black category, the nothing category. Okay, so let's, um, let's see how this works. I'm going to pick your diary back up again. I'm going to see if we can Find some examples of this in, in your thoughts. Okay, so let's have a look here. Okay, so let's have a look. This is, this is a, a good example here. The, um, the situation at work last week that fell slightly short of perfect, that you then categorised as being a total failure. Time for a diagram, I think, to explain this a little further. Let's get a bit of paper here. Yeah. If you remember, this is a diagram we've looked at before. When something happens, it is not that event that influences how we feel. It is the meaning that we attach to it. The thought. That thought then triggers feeling and that feeling then influences what we do. So, using this situation and work as an example, so we would put that here in the event. The thought is, this is not quite perfect and therefore it's a total failure. then would do what do you think? How would it make you feel? Mm. 
I think you're right. I think it would really affect your confidence and your motivation. And then how would that reduction in your motivation, in your confidence, influence your behaviour? Hmm. I think that that's definitely the case. I think that you'd hold back, you wouldn't. You're less likely to, to push yourself forward, which means you're probably going to miss opportunities. that have the potential to boost your confidence and the way that you think about yourself and instead feed back into this lower confidence motivation feed back into this idea that you are a failure There's another example that we can use. Okay, so I think that this is a good one here. You're on a bit of a diet at the moment, and you, on Tuesday, I think, ate a spoonful of ice cream. So. And the thought is, I've blown my diet. So that's the thought that I've blown my diet. And this makes you feel very upset. You end up eating the whole tub. This feeds back into feeling upset. And it creates the thought, I'm fat. And I'm useless. So, thinking in this way, this very black and white way, so with the work example, if it's not perfect, white, it's a failure, black, or this very all or nothing way, I've completely blown my diet, then triggers some very negative emotions which trigger unhelpful behaviours which feed back into the negative thought patterns which then feeds into the feelings and the behaviours and you get stuck in a quite unhelpful place because of this tendency that we all have to categorise in a very dichotomous way. Okay, so what to do about that? The best way to deal with this is to begin by considering how the world actually works. The reality. We don't live in a black or white world, a black or white way. Our experiences very much exist in the shades of grey in between those two endpoints. So that's where you start. Then when you notice that you are assessing things, evaluating things in a black and white way, begin by writing the thought down. Often when we write things down, we see them on a piece of paper in front of us in a very concrete way. It helps us to step back just a little bit. When we create that space, 
It creates an opportunity to do something a little different. Then, what you need to do, another diagram, is to identify the two black and white dichotomous categories. So, in this instance, we have, let's use, let's use the word example. So we've got failure at one end. Going all the way up to perfect at the other end. We kind of create a, a scale, I suppose. So failure on the scale is uh, zero, and perfect is ten. Now, the next step is to fill in the shades of grey where we actually live our lives. So let's say, I don't know, um, oh, should we do this? Let's go, let's get that midpoint five. So we'll say five, six, seven, eight, and nine. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm not sure how even this is, but And then, and obviously you do this with whatever your dichotomous categories are. But you work out what the different points on the scale are. So let's say, I don't know. So between 7 and 9 is good enough. Quarter six, okay, needs a bit of tweaking, maybe. Okay, okay then. One to three, the idea's okay, but probably need to rejig it. And maybe zero, and only zero is a okay. We need to completely rethink this, so you can see here. There's a lot that exists between perfect perfectionism and failure, but when we're in a bad place. All of this stuff, all of this business from one to nine, it's filtered out. All of this information that could help us feel less bad, even okay. So, what I guess is. I'd like you to think about this week. So when you are keeping your diary, when you are recording your emotions at the end of every day, I think we said when you're brushing your teeth, time, two or three minutes where you can just reflect on the day and how it's been and identify how strong your feelings have been and then you're identifying any thoughts that have triggered those particularly strong emotions. Think about this very, very common thinking pattern. 
And if you notice that that's what you're doing, that you have been categorizing your experience in a very black or white way, go through this process. Write it down. Identify the continuum with the two endpoints. Then fill in the middle bits. And try and reevaluate what has happened in light of those shades of grey. So you are providing yourself with all of the information with which to draw a conclusion rather than just focusing on the pieces of information that are likely to make you feel bad, anxious, or depressed, or stressed, or whatever it is. Okay. So, give it a go. See how you get on. Maybe we can talk about this more next time. But for now, thank you for coming to see me today. I hope that you enjoy whatever it is that you're doing next. And I look forward to seeing you at the same time.